Welcome on in Los Angeles Chargers faithful. This mock draft was a tough one. I, I don't say this very often. Usually I have a lot of fun doing mock drafts, but for whatever reason, this mock draft, it was not fun. It was very difficult. You know, sometimes they're easy for me. Most of the time they're easy for me. But why was it difficult? You know, why was it not easy? Why was it frustrating? Because I look at the roster, you know, I look at the roster, I'm looking at the team, I'm looking at the players and I'm like, how, how are we here? You know, I'm just like, why are we not consistently in the AFC championship? Why am I having this first pick at number five? It's just weird things like that, that have put me in a position to really sit back and think like, I'm looking at, once again, I'm looking at the roster and I see the holes, right? We got to get a cornerback. We have to go there. there there's going to be a, a great piece that we're going to pick at the number five spot. We have to get a, a legitimate linebacker for the group. But I don't know. It was just really tough. So I'm pretty sure this is the first time I ever said this. I'm pretty sure you're, most of you aren't going to like this mock draft. And you know, I'm okay with that, but I, I need constructive comments. I need constructive comments so I can make different additions because you guys have so many solid players, but things just didn't add up this past season. And we know why. We know Staley's gone. And if you have been rocking with us, you know I've never liked him from day one. From day one, never liked him. But we do have Coach Harbaugh coming on in. And with that, I believe he is going to take a, I would say it's a college approach. I would say it's an approach of getting best player available by a position that is needed and so we are gonna go with georgia tight end brock bowers out at the number five spot now i say this not reluctantly because i think brock bowers is one of the greatest players that i've evaluated in a very long time but my neighbors guys i need to i need you guys to be truly honest with me if i'm the gm i'm going malik neighbors and it's really not a question about it Truly, uh, I think you guys should go Malik Neighbors, but I need you guys to let me know in the comments. Are you guys on Team Malik Neighbors at the number five spot or Team Brock Bowers? I went with Brock Bowers because I believe I'm going to piss a lot of you off with this mock, but I believe that the the, the actual consensus is going to be Brock Bowers for you guys. This is what I've been seeing a lot of. I think you go Malik Neighbors, but Brock Bowers a phenomenal tight end in 2022 overall grade at a 90 let uh gave us seven touchdowns in an 84.4 overall grade in 2023 receiving grade is just phenomenal like a like a wide receiver at 87.1 and that's kind of why i don't feel guilty i don't feel guilty getting you guys a tight end because we see what travis kelsey and Patrick Mahomes are doing and that's going to be just as lethal as having a wide receiver if not the most lethal combination in having a Justin Herbert and a Brock Bauer so I really do love that combination and of course you still have weapons on the outside let me know if you already given up on Quentin Johnston but we're going into the second round and you guys are going to be losing Kenneth Murray more than likely unless you guys bringing him back which I doubt a lot of you would like that so we're going to we're gonna go to college station and we're gonna get edrin cooper the number one off the ball linebacker in this draft texas a&m kid i think he'll be a great addition to the defense because you have both phenomenal edges and khalil mack who was a stud all out right and then joey bosa who was a stud within his own right you guys have a lot of potential in that realm and with Edrin Cooper, like I said, he's the best off-ball linebacker in the draft. 90.8 overall grade. Missed tackles at 11. Don't love it, but I understand he's a guy that they kind of put all over the place in this past season. He's mainly in the box, but he had some D-line work. Had some slot participation as well. Pass rush grade at an 86.4. Run defense grade at an 87.6. And the most important thing, because guys, I don't want to sound like a dick. I'm not doing a dig at you guys, but it's unfortunate. But you guys have to really draft for the Kansas City Chiefs. Unfortunately, you guys have to draft for the Las Vegas Raiders. It's embarrassing, but you guys have to draft to beat the Denver Broncos. You know, if you have a lot of conversations on who is the worst team in that division, you're going to get a lot of Denver Broncos. 
100%. But after that, if you ask someone that's not a Chargers fan, you're not going to get as many Raiders being the worst or, or third worst that you might think. It could be some Chargers, and you guys have a legitimate quarterback, and so that's embarrassing and disgusting. So we have the coverage grade at 85.5, which I think is phenomenal because he's going to be helping out with Travis Kelsey, a learning that agenda. Travis Kelsey is about to retire. He's about to be gone. But if you think that Patrick Mahomes is not going to find another guy, you're just wrong. And that's foolish. So we get him in the building. We love that. And then we get a right tackle for you guys. I can't remember the right tackle you guys have now, but I don't think that in any shape or form is it wrong to get an upgrade at the position or to get a guy who I think is going to be a knockout slam dunk for you guys. Right tackle out of Notre Dame, Blake Fisher, big 6'6 guy. He's got that Notre Dame pedigree to his name. Did give up three sacks this past season. We don't like that, but definitely has the opportunity to learn from Coach Harbaugh. He does have his nose in on that offensive line agenda, something he is very passionate about. Run block rate at a 69.1, pass block rate at a 72.5, zone at a 72. And so I just think you guys just put another player in that position, whether it be competition or he takes the role entirely. I think this kid has great feet. I think he has good arm length. I think I think he has a good opportunity to make some waves. And so it's like, why is it Zion Johnson really painting out the way I want? You guys have a, a, a beautiful pick of Rashawn Slater on that left side, but it's just that interior. Corey Lindsley, he didn't have the best season in the world. I'm not, not off on him at all, but there's just some things in the offensive line I just want to make better. And then we have to go corner. You know, you guys, you guys are probably saying go corner earlier. It wasn't available, guys. It wasn't as sexy as I wanted to be at that point, but we have Max Melton corner out of Rutgers in this fourth round maybe he's there maybe he's not but a 43940 something he gave us at the combine which I think is phenomenal 73.1 overall grade gave up three and gave up three touchdowns this past season coverage grade at a 73.7 run defense grade is not lovely at all at a 64.9 man coverage grade is okay at a 61.6 and then the zone coverage rate is 74 points. So not absolutely the most beautiful things with him, but definitely is a guy that if you guys can get the interior position laid out, I think y'all should definitely go free agency. So if you're mad at me, why didn't I go, you know, interior defense, interior defense, guys, I think that needs to be because y'all are on a win now agenda. Are you or are you not? So if anyone's being goofy right now saying, what about interior? What about interior? That has to be a free agency pickup. That's not a rookie pickup that I want for you guys. And so I think if you guys can get someone in the interior to give some fits to, I don't think you guys have a lot of money, but you guys are gonna have to get someone within the interior. You have phenomenal edges and that's what helps the cornerbacks that aren't the greatest at man coverage. But he's very athletic and Max Melton. And then we go to the fifth round. We have to get Austin Eckler. A replacement of some sorts i believe he's going to be out of the building you guys let me know he's looking for a long-term deal i don't think he's going to get it i think he's going to be sadly mistaken of his value trey benson running back out of florida state i think you have guys i think you guys have a legitimate opportunity to get younger get faster get stronger get a little bit more bulkier but still keep still keep that same type of size running back strength running back in a smaller dude i think he's a carbon cutout of Brees Hall within himself, the running back for the New York Jets. Overall grade at 84.2. Gave the world 14 rushing touchdowns. We love that. Rushing grade at 87.2. Gap grade at 89.4. And then the zone grade at a 72.7. And what he's going to be able to bring almost immediately is he's going to bring a lot of focus and a lot of attention. It's going to help with that play action game. And we don't actually know what kind of offense you guys are going to be running. But if it's anything what Jim Harbaugh has been doing, it's going to be heavily running, 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 and then getting some play action work for Justin Herbert, getting him out in space, getting him easy targets to Keenan Allen, easy targets to Brock Bowers. And so that's what should be within the offense. But if you also think that Coach Harbaugh is going to be leaving this draft without getting a Wolverine within himself, you're foolish and you're goofy. So what he's going to do, he is going to go 
to Michigan and pick up his left guard, Trevor Keegan, who's 6'6", 320 pounds, a big old boy, overall grade at a 68.6, gave up zero sacks this past season and only one hit this past season. And so I love that. And I'm not saying I'm off on Zion Johnson. You guys let me know if you are. But I'm saying you guys need a guy within those trenches that's going to be able to give some competition tours. Who's going to be able to light a fire under someone's behind at some points in times. I just think that's going to be a phenomenal addition within the interior. He doesn't have to start immediately. He can get his feet a little bit wet. But I think there needs to be a little bit of a change within the tackles, between the tackles. That's for sure. And then in the seventh round, we got to go back. We have to go straight back to the cornerback position. And so we go to the SEC. We go to South Carolina. We go get Marcellius Dial, 44940 speed. I think he plays way faster than that, if you want to believe it. I just believe that there is so much receiver talent in AFC West. And so throwing cornerback position in the draft needs to be the most highest priority for the Los Angeles Chargers simply because, like I said, Pastor Mahomes ain't going nowhere ever, ever. And and it, it's it's it, that needs to be the goal. I'm not saying you guys need to focus on the Raiders. I'm not saying you guys need to focus on the, the Broncos because at the end of the day, we're all chasing the Chiefs. Even my team, we're all chasing the Chiefs and that needs to be the blueprint. You guys should be really pissed off when you hear top two quarterbacks and Justin Herbert's name not being said. Top three quarterbacks, his name's not being said. Top five quarterbacks, you hear it a little bit more, but it's not as much as it should be. And so we, we need to fix that. And so I think getting defensive players in the building, believe it or not, having them win a little bit more is going to help. Overall rated at 79.1, gave up two touchdowns this past season, didn't get his hand on the ball. I don't like that at all. But we have a coverage graded at 78.2, run defense graded at 70.7, so a little bit more physical than Max Melton. So I like that. Man coverage grade is a little bit better to it as well at a 75.5. So we love that. And once again, I'm not a Corey Lindsley denier, but we go to Oklahoma and we're going to pick up center Andrew Rain out of Oklahoma. And what this kid is going to be bringing to the table is going to be bringing size, but he's also going to be bringing versatility. At the Senior Bowl, he played a lot of guard. He did a lot of guard work at the Senior Bowl that we were at. We had an interview with him. He loved it. He understand that he is going to have an opportunity to be a little bit more flexible in the NFL. And so he had an overall grade at a 63.5 this past season. Gave up three sacks, 10 hurries. Don't love that. But there is a story with that. As an OU fan, which I am, Dylan Grabrell, our starting quarterback, had an unfortunate habit of holding on to the ball way too long. So that's going to be a story within itself. Run block grade at a 60.2, pass block grade at a 70.3. Those are good numbers for center in the Big 12. Those are really good numbers. But like I, like I said before, he does have the fluidity to play any of the guard positions. He played a little more right guard than left guard at the Senior Bowl. But then also, if Corey Lindsley, if something happens, injury rise, or if he really isn't, you know, performing to his high capabilities, Andrew Ramp can give him some competition or maybe even do a little bit better and, and take over the role. So let's go through this again. At the number five overall pick at, in round one, um, you guys give it up to me. You know, Malik Neighbors of Brock Bowers, we went Brock Bowers, but I, I really want to know what you guys think on that one. Edron Cooper, linebacker out of Texas A&M in round two, round three. We went right tackle Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame. I think he does a lot of great things. That's going to be helping for the offense. Max Melton, a speedy cornerback out of Rutgers. He is going to be viable for the defense. Trey Benson, a Brees Hall carbon cutout copy. I think he'll be phenomenal for power game and he does have the ability to catch the ball. Trevor Keegan, interior help within the offensive line out of Michigan, a big old 6'6", 320 pound, more athletic than you think type of guy. And then we get another speedy defensive back out of South Carolina and Marcellius Dial, just throwing more rocks at that cornerback position. And then Andrew Rain, center slash guard out of Oklahoma. I think he's gonna also help you guys within the trenches. Let me know. I know I'm gonna get torn up from the floor and up, 
but I'm okay with it. We live, we learn, and guys, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe.